From which years? Uh, they vary, but that, this one's 67 and that one's like, uh, I think that's a London one, so it's 64? Yeah, 64. Yeah. Oh, so this is not in Amsterdam? Uh, yeah, well, lots of them were in Amsterdam, like, um, but just this one was a London one. Yeah, yeah. um, there was a couple, I think he exhibited at Stady Lake with solo exhibitions in 1960 and, like, 67, wow. uh, 70, really cool yeah. Sculpture. So yeah, beautiful. yeah. Well, uh, Anna invited me to do something on the history of avant-garde in Japan. And, um, but of course what's uh, available in terms of prints and etc. is limited abroad, so in Europe. Uh, so I started thinking, yeah, what can I find here? Uh, and uh, I looked at the eye collection, um, and Anna and Simona had mentioned this uh, filmmaker and um, sculptor called Shinkich Tachi, and I wasn't aware of him before. But, um, so I started looking him up. Um, I could still find some things online, and um, yeah, that made me think. Uh, Shinkichi was born in the U United States and moved to Europe, and his parents are Japanese. So it sort of made me question, what does Japan actually mean to him, and can we consider his films as, you know, Japanese or, you know, a part mm -hmm. of the national cinema of Japan, or do we have to think of a, another way of um, describing his work? So that, that got me thinking about other Japanese filmmakers and artists who went abroad mm -hmm. and live abroad and what they produced outside of Japan. Yeah. What's interesting is that they're quite diverse, of course, because all their ex experiences are various and uh, multiple, you know. Different uh, generations also, I guess. Yeah, right? different generations. Uh, more recently, I think people are traveling much more than they were perhaps when Tajiri, Ashikish Tajiri was around. So. Um, their experiences vary, but um, there's this book by this uh, writer called Hamid Nafisi called Accented Cinema, um, which is about uh, ex uh, exile filmmakers and diasporic filmmakers, and he looks at a, a range of uh, filmmakers from sort of working in feature and narrative films to experimental mm -hmm. films and documentary, uh, but sort of brings them together through this sort of a collective experience of exile. Or being exile. Yeah, of being exiled from various situations for of various different reasons. nationalities anyway. Yeah. yeah. Different nationalities, different political situations, yeah. different reasons for exile. And he he says he he can see these um, sort of questioning of identity and you know notions of homelessness and ideas around travel and journey uh, through their works. And maybe I, I think I found in some of these works at least uh, the same notion of like travel and journey. Um, yeah, she, uh, Tajiri's film about bicycles is as much as about the discovery of the cycling culture in Amsterdam and also this notion of, you know, con travel yeah. within it. Yeah. The London based Japanese filmmaker Hiraki Sawa, his film Dwelling is a film shot in his apartment with uh, little airplanes flying around, like a stop motion animation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's obviously a lot to do with this notion of travel. Yeah. Um, this is our second time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it's short, so we could all do it in one day. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. We've been contact uh, by mail for for a while. For, a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for six months or so now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> six months. Wow. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I first talked about the program with Anna um, back in yeah July, July. And uh, soon after we met, and uh, yeah. yeah, so it's been. It's yeah, been I, I was going through the mail correspondence, and I said, uh, yeah, okay, this has been like something growing, and I like, to see how the uh, evolution of the contact, uh, which is very nice, because yeah. usually that's how it should be. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, six months <laughs> yeah. for for two, one hour and a half program. <laughs> uh, it was actually a discov remarkable discovery for me what I, what uh, prints were actually. Um, you know, in the eye collection. Yeah. Uh, I didn't expect, uh, you know, Wakamatsu's uh, <laughs> films to be here uh, and five five copies of those as well. Wow. Yeah. And um, also it's, uh, yes, if you look at what's um, available in the collection, you sort of uh, can ask questions like, why are these prints there? Yeah. And uh, some of those, some of those um, 
traced back to programs back from 1968. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, shall I show? Yeah, actually, yeah. that's a good time too. And uh, one of the filmmakers that we're screening as part of the program is um, um, Kuriyoji. And uh, he had actually uh, two seasons at the Netherlands Film Museum um, dedicated to him, one in August 1968, one in December 1972. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a program from 1968, uh, yeah, yeah which I wasn't aware of, yeah. Um, Yeah, and uh, I mean, his prints traveled a lot, well, his films traveled a lot in uh, Europe in the 60s, went to Oberhausen and uh, yeah. uh, Venice and all these places, but... Yeah, yeah. I mean, our ex-director, Jan de Waal, was definitely interested in a lot of um, experimental cinema uh, mm -hmm. back then, so... Uh, and uh, he had a good eye for whatever was circulating in festivals, like mm -hmm. from Knocke to Oberhausen mm -hmm. and other venues, so I can imagine that... Um, the fact that we have some mm -hmm. of the films uh, yeah. is probably derives from this interest back then yeah. and then can be traced back um, from programming to collection, let's say. Yeah. Um, and some of them yeah. are in good condition. Some yeah. of them are in good condition, others not, so yeah. it really uh, varies. Yeah. Uh, partially, yes, uh, but um, luckily the ones that we really wanted to screen were in good condition. Um, we wanted to screen at least one Yoji Kuri work and I was hoping to screen um, Aus, yeah. which is a film with a soundtrack by Yoko Ono. Yeah. Um, so, and Yoko Ono was a, um, well, still is an artist that travels a lot. And she moved to New York in the early 50s and uh, became this sort of, um, yeah, sort of established this network of communication between Japan and, well, Tokyo and New York mainly. And uh, uh, unfortunately, there weren't uh, any of her sort of short fluxes films, but they were films that she soundtracked. And uh, yeah, so uh, I was the one she soundtracked was in great condition. Yeah, we had two copies, like one was a distribution, 60mm distribution copy, mm -hmm. which was a bit scratchy and not really good. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a 35mm, which is the one that at the end, I guess you, uh, so that, yeah, we selected yeah. for. Okay, do you have a little overview of what is actually in Japan, what yeah. has been preserved, what is not uh, there anymore, what is maybe in other archives. Uh, are you also doing this research, comparing what archives have in the world of mm -hmm. collections? Or yeah, yeah, or I am. Um, it's, uh, so, for example, the film was showing Super Up by Kenji Kanesaka. Um, he, he was a film shot in Chicago, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was only aware of one print that was available in Japan. Uh, his wife owned it. and. Um, uh, the colors were, in, you know, faded and it's not right. in very good condition. Uh, but through researching this program, I found that Chicago Film Archives actually owns a copy of the, uh, two copies of the film, and mm -hmm. uh, one of them with much richer colors and in better condition. So, yeah. So, so through the researching this program, I found what's what else is available in terms of the overall sort of state yeah. of experimental yeah. film in Japan in terms of preservation. It's not great actually. There's no. one. There's one um, center called the Image Forum mm -hmm. uh, who branched, well, its predecessor was like a Japanese film co op, mm -hmm. and uh, it became Image Forum. And a lot of the prints are available okay. there. Um, like there were probably distribution copies, right? Of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and a lot of. And Lux now. Exactly, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, as, as any case with any country, it shouldn't be just one uh, in, you know, institute and all these other films that. Um, the filmmakers own themselves so often get forgotten because Image Forum uh, distributes the prints overseas and sort of creates yeah. the history of Japanese yeah. experimental film. Yeah. But of course, there's more to it than yeah. what that it's available there. So um, a lot of my research has been to look beyond Image Forum and awesome. see what's available, who, which filmmakers own prints, the conditions, how, what are, what, yeah. what are those conditions? Because uh, basically yeah. most of these films are still in the hands of the filmmakers themselves. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, a lot of them are, which is okay. quite problematic in terms of preservation, yeah. of course. Especially video, I would say, is yeah. even worse uh, condition. Yeah. Yeah, Wakamatsu was um, it, rather than an experimental filmmaker. He was a sort of a how would I put it? He he worked in this industry called pink film, uh, but he's one of so which is sort of softcore porn yeah. films, uh, but his works were within the pink industry very radical. I've got his film, uh, his script writers and uh, 
uh, associates were people like Masawa Dachi, who were quite uh, uh, established in the experimental mm -hmm. film scene. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's been sort of interest in Wakamatsu's work since maybe 10 years ago. And um, uh, so uh, a friend of mine, a researcher, curator friend, is, has been uh, an instrumental figure in bringing, uh, well, establishing work and attention, yeah, yeah. Kind of bringing yeah. attention to his work uh, internationally. And uh, so he's been looking around for for where where these prints are held, yeah. and because mm -hmm. his prints went abroad, mm -hmm. and uh, actually, uh, the film that's a uh, one of the films yeah. uh, that's available here is a uh, quite a rarity, and there's yeah. five copies of it in the eye collection. Uh, I was watching Shinkichi Tajiri's work, and the one I I found particularly interesting was um, bicycles, because I very much related to uh, Shinkichi Tajiri's experience of coming to Amsterdam and finding uh, a cycling culture I've never seen before, which is everyone cycles, uh, all ages, all sorts of bicycles. So I very much related to this film. And, uh, and I, I just met a friend whose, um, whose boyfriend had started this um, uh, project, which was about uh, um, eco-friendly sort of pedal-powered uh, screenings in different places. So uh, screenings where you don't need electricity plugs because uh, all energy is powered through uh, cycling. So I thought I, I decided to get in touch with him, and I thought it would be a nice sort of yeah, uh, uh, combination. Yeah, yeah combination to uh, show a film about cycling through this pedal, pedal yeah. powered uh, installation. Uh, yeah. And maybe I can add a little bit about bicycle because it's been a, a long uh, going project uh, mm -hmm. from the archive point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, actually there are different versions of bicycles uh, by Tajiri, and. Um, uh, he shot it originally on uh, Super 8, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, um, which he kind of edited himself in a roll, which uh, then uh, we made a blow up to 16 uh, millimeter. Um, so there is a, let's say, this original form, which is, um, I don't remember how long, I think 15, 9, or 18, 18 minutes. 18 yeah. minutes which is the one which has been digitized, which is going to be used for the uh, bicycle pirate cinema uh, performance. But um, many years later, in 2000 something, uh, Tajiri went back to his own films and made uh, digital versions of his films by, for example, adding music uh, to some of the films or re-editing some of them. And one of the films that he re-edited was Bicycles, uh, which was visible at a certain point on his website. I don't know if it's visible. Oh, it says it's under construction. It's under construction, yeah. okay. Yeah. But at a certain moment you could see these versions uh, on the website of Taji. Hopefully we we'll go back mm -hmm. to. And uh, with Mark, the senior curator, Marco Meyer, uh, did some years ago a reconstruction of that new version which means that uh, uh, the film was uh, digitally uh, was restored digitally and edited digitally according to the version that he did himself with the music that he added himself and with it was slightly zoomed in also so the zooming the framing was slightly different from let's say what was in the original camera uh, that he shot so this whole changes uh, were re-emulated in the digital restorations that we did a few years ago. And this is the one which is going to be presented, I think, in the cinema. That's right. All these exhibition catalogues um, um, uh, of Shinkichi Shajiri's uh, exhibitions um, that are available in Amsterdam, in the State of the Museum Library, in, um, in the OPA, uh, yeah, Public Library, all these places, there's so many uh, yeah. No, but the work of, of Tajir is so special. It's really, I mean, in a way, pretty early in the 50s uh, mm -hmm. with Vipers, for example, and already, yeah, kind of nice mixture of fun footage films, of mixing his own footage, uh, reusing his own footage, uh, scratching and painting. It's, it's like all the media I was interested in put all together, and of course, the sculptures of they are part of the films and also his own. And so it's um, it's an integral part of his oeuvre, 
actually yeah. the film. The films, yeah. And uh, but um, indeed, this is mostly famous also in Holland for its sculptures. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's it's always the same thing. But these big names who are artists in other media, film is always a little bit the uh, um, lesser uh, sun. Yeah. Uh, and and so it's it's interesting to to keep the right value to the films. Mm -hmm. uh, in its own right, I think. So. I've not met them yet, uh, on the evening is the time. Very nice. Yeah. yeah, it's the first time I'll meet them, so um, I, I would love for them to say a few words about, uh, you know... Be, uh, it could be interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah but they probably should know beforehand. Yeah, of course, <laughs> and uh, I mean, yeah, and we've also decided to have the conversation, the sort of introduction before the program, and yeah. just show the whole thing, and then maybe we have time uh, at the end to uh, have it. Uh, Q and A, but uh, maybe if we have time at the end, we could ask them to say a few words about what machine to tragedy and um, with members of Pirate Cinema. Actually, uh, is a performance that a filmmaker called Takahiko Imura did, and uh, he's a filmmaker from Japan who moved to New York in 1966, stayed there for three years, and then later to Berlin for three years, mm -hmm. and then has since. Um, moved between Tokyo and New York and lived between the two places. And uh, his performance is a projection onto the back, uh, onto someone's back. And uh, during the and, and the performer who's just sitting down doesn't pretends he doesn't notice the projection. But uh, uh, during the projection Takahiko Imura cuts the jacket into the shape of the projection so the projector projects onto this naked skin at the end of the um, performance. So within ten minutes, this yeah. happens. Yeah. Uh, it's a quite a simple performance, but it was his first yeah. um, sort of performative print projection, yeah. and he later did multiple projection shows and uh, you know at, at the Electric Circus yeah. in New York and all these places. So yeah, it was the beginnings of his uh, sort of performative cinema projections, yeah. and uh, yeah, so we're doing a reenactment of that yeah, um, performance. Yeah. yeah, in the absence of Takahiko Imura, um, but. I was thinking there's this um, other artist based in New York working currently. Um, he's got a um, he's got he's involved in the Whitney Biennale, mm -hmm. for example, uh, this year. Um, but called A. Anakawa, and he's been doing a lot of sort of tribute performances of early um, Japanese avant-garde works. Uh, people like Chicken Kobo in the fifties, and uh, so he's he's been doing that. So I thought it was also a homage of to his reenactments. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's these all these loops happening. <laughs> these these films are so varied, it might have been a good idea to separate it into a few bits, but I, I and, and I've seen great in uh, great examples of, you know, uh, film screenings where uh, there's an introduction mm -hmm. and they show a couple of films and then you talk again and you know. But for this program I thought it would be a better idea to just show all the films. Um, because if there are any commonalities between them um, that's how you find them, and I'd rather yeah, people cool. discover them themselves if, if there are any, yeah. than um, you know break the flow and uh, doing the screening. So yeah. yeah, that's I mean we'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the eCinema blog, which is an excellent space I think to generate interest, but also upload information yeah. that you might not be have the time to sort of go through du during the event, so people can refer to it before or after the screening and uh, get more information uh, if, if they are interested. And uh, uh, what I've tried to do with the blog is also provide links and videos and sort of um, uh, more information available online beyond the blog uh, so people can really start exploring if they feel like it, yeah. Um, other things that have, been, that have been great is that uh, uh, I've got in touch with one of the producers of the film uh, from Chicago Super up, who I, I I didn't have contact details from before, and this kindly provide, provided us with um, sort of production notes from memory um, for the shoot of the film, and uh, so I've uploaded. I'm well, I'm going to upload that uh, onto the blog, and um, yeah, I've also used the blog and the sort of Facebook event page as a platform to um, show the show a bit of the process of the research I've done. Yes. So I've uh, shown photographs of some of the uh, catalogs that I found in the libraries at Stadia Lake Museum I, and uh, also um, at the OBA, the public library, uh, just to show the sort of range and depths available in, in, uh, in beyond just the one program. So I think the blog and these uh, 
uh, the Facebook event page, for example, is a good space to explore um, activities beyond just the event of the screening. You know, if you're interested uh, to find out more, it's also available. Yeah, but uh, this, yeah, this is the best thing because also, I mean, uh, collecting it's safe. Talking about our uh, institute, I um, the collections are always linked. So what is in the library? Uh, so you, the film is one object, but then you have the information which is in the library, which is linked to the object of the film. It might be also other uh, collections like the paper archive, for example, of filmmakers. And so you could go deeper and deeper and deeper and connect all these uh, things, which I think is in a way, when you have time to do it, is the best approach to, uh, to a curating a program, for example. Because yeah, then you can, it's like a, a spider web. Yeah. It comes together.